XML KOS profiles. Let me briefly summarize KOS policies. KOS stands for quality of service, and QS can be specified for any DDS entity, a domain participant, a publisher, a subscriber, a data writer, a data reader, or a topic. There are over 50 different QS policies, hundreds of configurable parameters, and what these QS do is configure DDS behavior. If you want to learn more about QS in detail, please look at the quality of service lesson. Now, configuring QoS is complex. Um, basically, it's one of the most powerful features in DDS, but it's also the most difficult to learn and understand. Many behaviors will result from setting multiple QoS parameters cooperatively. So you need to set different QoS uh, policies to certain values in order to get a resulting desired behavior. Um, you have to map your system requirements to DDS concepts or the quality of service concepts. So what you want to do, you sort of have to mentally map to what DDS can provide you through QoS. Another issue is that people with DDS expertise, people who know how to program uh, the DDS API, how to use the DDS API to uh, do what they need to do, may not be the same people who uh, need to configure the QoS. Uh, people need to configure the QoS uh, might not be the same as the programmers. So um, as a developer, you're creating an application, you're programming, you're, you're using C, C++, Java, Python, whatever programming language to develop an application. But you may not necessarily know the exact operating scenario of those applications. On the other hand, architects, designers, and operators of the actual system, they have operational expertise, system expertise, but they may not know in detail uh, DDS and how to set QoSs or even what QoSs are, uh, exist. So often QoS settings, the exact values of quality service can't be uh, determined at coding time. Um, you may not be able to uh, hard code a QoS value into your system because you just don't know what value to use. And you can only set them on deployment. So only when your application has been uh, tested, um, you uh, deploy your application in a system, and when that system gets put out into the field, that perhaps that's perhaps the only time you really can set the value of some QoSs. And finally, one size does not fit all. That means you may need different sets of QoS values for different data streams or topics. So not all topics behave the same. On deployment, the QoS for a topic may change because uh, you're changing how the system's operating. So you have different operating modes. You have initialization, you have uh, uh, maybe you have a fast mode, a high performance mode, maybe you, uh, so depending on the operating mode of the system, the QoS values may change. For the life cycle of a system, you have development, you have testing, maybe you're simulating part of the system, and you have deployment. And again, the QoS values that you might need to use uh, might be different during each of these different phases. And finally, the same system may be deployed on different networks, even different uh, hardware. And these networks and hardware will perform differently and with different values of QoS, you can get your applications to run optimally. How do you manage the complexity of using DDS QoS? Well, you could use a divide and conquer strategy. In divide and conquer, architects and designers would take system requirements and define the different desired behaviors, except they would define these behaviors symbolically. Developers would use these symbolic definitions to configure the DDS objects that they're using to create the application communications infrastructure. These symbolic definitions would become actual QoS settings when the system actually needs to run, either uh, in testing or even for actual deployment. So at that time, symbolic definitions 
will need to become concrete QS values. Now, these three different roles um, basically can be done by the same person or it could be done by different teams of people. It just depends on the size and the uh, mapping of responsibility in your system. However, these three different roles take place at three different times in the development process. At the beginning uh, of your system development, this is where you would define the symbolic behaviors. During system development, you would use these symbolic definitions. And towards the end of your uh, development cycle, that's when you actually need the concrete settings of the QS values. Now, to help you do this, RTI provides something known as QS profiles. Okay, QS profiles are basically these symbolic definitions. So architects or uh, system designers would define QS profiles and QS profiles map to basically sets of QS values that when used together produ produces a desired behavior, produces a specific behavior. Developers would use these uh, QS profiles by name, so symbolically, when they're configuring or creating their DDS entities. And then at some point, the QS values in the QS profiles need to be set and need to be adjusted. What are QS profiles? Well, a QS profile is basically that symbolic definition. It is a named set or group of QS values that when used together will produce a specific behavior. A QS profile may contain QS for any number of DDS objects. However, commonly you would have QS profiles that only contain domain participant QS policies. So these are uh, policies that usually configure how the domain participant uses a local network, as well as discovery, how the domain participant discovers other domain participants. The other type of common QS profiles is one that affects end-to-end -end behavior. And those QS profiles typically contain data writer and data reader QS policies. And they're fundamentally, they'll have multiple of these for different end-to-end -end behaviors. And finally, QS profiles will be defined through XML formatted strings. So we'll take a look at that next.